a warm welcome to today's discussion and class on ben johnson's wall pony a popular play so to those who have been listening to uh, the sessions the discussions thank you for staying in touch and to those who are new to my videos and sessions a warm welcome to you and if you like please do share and uh, put your valuable feedback in the feedback in the comment box so with beginning today's discussion on benjamin johnson or ben johnson we know of him being born in the westminster in the year 1573 and we also know that he came and belonged to a very humble and respectable and cultured middle class family so one of his famous work as we all all have heard in the history of english literature is every man and his humor that was published in around 1598 to 99 now during his time the time that he had lived uh, we all know that uh, uh, this this very time was where the people began to inquire and interrogate on different matters of the society so this this reasoning this idea of questioning on different matters was gradually becoming a very Uh, we kind of creating a very chaotic situation. So, with this kind of curiosity among the people and the society, we see that there is a sense of revival or renaissance. So, there was a crave of transcendent transcendence among these people. So, with revival, with renaissance, with curiosity, with reasoning, with sensibility, we see that there is a sense of transcendence. Now, this particular age to what Ben Jonson belonged is the spirit of renaissance, is the spirit of having something, ah, uh, something new, or you know, shaping or structuring what it, what the society was always presenting to us. So, the spirit of uh, a necessity of belongingness to the society, the the spirit of giving a shape to the ah uh, to the contemporary society. so uh, along with renaissance so we see pragmatism coming into prominence so apart from that we see a rising middle class there was a cut throat competition among these people of the middle class everywhere in the period of ben johnson now the area of interrogation was power class and social structure now why social structure because we see that uh, the elizabethan time was having a capitalistic orientation this 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 very capitalist existence was heightened gradually as the age progressed and with capitalism comes greed and thirst for power now the varied sections of the society now if we have capitalist society definitely the social structure is segregated into very varied divisions so there is a marginalized there is this middle class there is this growing on uh, the established class then there is the extremists now these varied sections of the society were not given the opportunity and often suppressed by the superior ones the extreme ones the powerful ones and when they are suppressed what happens these marginalized these bounded people they began to question the higher authority or those in the power so such chaos such questioning certain it such interrogations were coming up during the time of benjamin johnson now definitely belonging to an age of chaos and reasoning ben johnson sets a narrative named walpone now we this 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 name is very different very unique walpone or the fox so this narrative is a fine balance between humor and realism So as we all know that Ben Jonson is uh, aiming at presenting a society and uses excess of humor, excess of kind of parodying uh, intention to reflect the abnormality and the absurdity of the society. This becomes a dominant trait in most of his works, like Every Man and His Humor, Volpone, and so on. now with this very dominant trait we also know that ben johnson is blessed with the introduction of the comedy of humors so suddenly when we study or we get to hear a word or a term like humor or folly or satire we come across uh, ben johnson so there is also a very parodying note in volpone there is satirical elements there is a metaphorical dimension that is found in this particular narrative So narration of Walpone is fed both by folly and humor. 
folly as in we know that these are certain characters or aspects of human characters which are of negative aftermath. So follies are faults in a human being which are often reflected in a very parodying way, in a very amusing way in the works of many writers, many writers of the Jacobian and the Elizabethan period. Now Ben Johnson became more convincing with his intentions of portraying the contemporary life. So as we have already heard that he was trying to portray the real contemporary life with the elements like humor. Now he remained true to his declared intention. Now what is this intention? It is about uh, presenting the real life, the contemporary life, the chaos, the turbulence, the divided social structure, the uh, capitalist versus the middle class, the greed versus the naive. So all these aspects, his intentions were clear and he was trying to portray it not in a direct narrative but by uh, providing a structure which could uh, ridicule the absurdity of the contemporary society. Now, as we know that it contains, uh, the Volpone contains humor, it can be considered as a comedy as well or an intense comedy as the characters are portraying the life and its triviality, right? Now, the attacks of the two important human follies we see here is that it is greed and the rapacity. Now, Volpone or the fox, the name itself suggests an animal symbolism, isn't it? Because Volpone or the fox, now what does a fox do? Why is it associated with a fox? So this very symbolism is very unique. It, it sparks a curiosity among the readers. So the characters, if we see or have heard of, is uh, quite uh, 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 not, not very, you know, it, it's something very Elizabethan. So it's not something that we get to see in today's literary works in the 21st century. So the characters are symbolized in different animals, animal-like features and animals like Volpone is presented as the fox to which we see the title. So thereby we can uh, take into consideration Volpone being the major and the central character of the narrative. Then there comes Mosca, the fly, then Voltor, the vulture, Corvashio, the raven, Corvaidu, the crow. Now, if, if we are trying to symbolize these characters with the animals, there comes a question is why? Why are they symbolized with these kind of animals? And why the, this particular animals like the fox, the vulture, the raven, the bird. So these birds and animals, the nature is amalgamating with the human. So there is this chain of being that is created. Now the question is why? And towards the end of the study and the discussion we'll see, we'll get an answer to this why. Why are, this, uh, why are the birds and animals uh, symbolized with the humans? Now Johnson is trying to present a reality in a very fantastical way by using a very... Uh, fantasy way or because because this narrative is not certainly something that we get to see in general life these are not just folded by the characters these are not intricately weaved in, in different characters who are evolving with time but there is some certain symbolism some certain metaphorical dimensions added for us to identify how ridiculing how how you know he is using a form of ridicule to present the stock society so here not only the nature is glorified with the animal or the birds but also there is a behavioral shift of the animals to the humans and the humans to the animals right so there is this strange and unique association of man and animal that we see that or, or we can say that brings a role reversal right because here animals be kind of behave like a human while the humans try to behave like animals. So they fall prey to each other's characteristics and follies and aspects. So with this role reversal, we also see a reversal of traditional and moral values. Now we are constantly talking about the two aspects, greed and rapacity. So as we begin to study the three acts, the five acts, I'm sorry, we come across the greed of gold and wealth. So Johnson made the play uh, greed-centered or gold-centered. 
so primarily the object the uh, is is the goal to which we see all the characters are kind of intricated and weaved together so before we enter to study the comedy we see major characters like volpone the fox mosca the fly and the greedy tri trio who are the who are the greedy trio it is voltor it is corvino and corbaccio now why are they named greedy trio that is something very interesting we'll see it alongside so there there are two other good characters that is bonerio and celia there is a deformed trio as well apart from the greedy trio we have a deformed trio and that is nano that is castroni and that is androgyno now we see that there is a prologue following the five acts so these acts are separated with scenes each scenes having something meaningful to present to you so the narration is uh, very thought provoking as gradually we'll get to learn so many of uh, follies in our lives and then we'll see certain moral elements coming towards the end so definitely that's very thought provoking that's a very learned sequence now the narration begins with a prologue that introduces the play it is based on a stage technique narration so we see that as soon as we study the acts we get to see that these characters are coming on a stage and they're performing and they're addressing certain things to the audience and this is how the uh, stage play act goes on so we see that the stage is set for a play where one of the actors is set to address in the prologue and as we move from the prologue to the acts and the scenes we see that we encounter volpone in the very act 1 scene 1 where we find him being uh, or acting as a very greedy fellow and is overjoyed with the idea of having a lot amount of gold in his life so the gold is a uh, coming one by one and gradually becomes the central point of the play so besides volpone we also encounter mosca who is the fly and some uh, somewhere acts as a parasite they are taking a uh, kind of taking wealth to be the utmost uh, or the most significant part of their life and they are talking and celebrating the idea of wealth and they feel that you know it is only gold and jewels that can make them stronger and that how far they can uh, have a very uh, kind of happy and a powerful life by gaining or tricking people by giving them their most valuable things so we will see gradually that volpone and mosca turning to a trickster strangely we see volpone calls gold as saint so when someone associates gold with saint so you can idea that there is a uh, there is something very spiritual something very powerful that goes on with the idea when volpone calls gold as saint Mosca seems to also support the statement of Volpone. So thereby we see that they are overwhelmed with the concept of wealth, gold and jewels and prosperity and uh, with this we come to greediness. So the conversation between Mosca and Volpone continues and we see that how they turn to a trickster and as we move to further scenes and acts we see that gradually there are other characters coming up like Nano the dwarf and Rogaino the hermaphrodite and the Castrone who is the eunuch now uh, we see that uh, Volpone and Mosca gradually sets to trickery they try to trick the greedy trio which is uh the corvino voltor and corbaccio they intend to gain more gold and by doing so they make a, a promise to those who are sending them gold or valuable jewels a chance of becoming the heir after volpone's death so the main idea was that uh, volpone thought of tricking people along with his uh, friend mosca uh, so they both decide that they will be uh telling people telling the people who are intending to uh sell certain jewels to them and when they do so they will be given a promise or they will be convinced to believe that after volpone dies they will become the heir of the all, heir of all that volpone possessed because volpone did not have a child so people were very curious 
that what would happen if Volpone dies? What would be happening to all the jewels and the golds and the uh, valuables that he had? So people, uh, the, the greedy trio was becoming overwhelmed with the idea that if they could become the, become the potential heir of to Volpone's wealth, it would have set their life to prominence. Now, if you see that from the greedy trio, there is Voltor uh, who presents an engraved plate to Volpone and Volpone tricks him by playing a role of an old man who is on his deathbed and might die anytime soon. And then Mosca also plays the trick by planting in Voltor's head that, you know, he is uh, the potential heir to Volpone's wealth. And now if uh, Volpone dies, then uh, there is a will where he has already stated that Voltor is potentially becoming the heir of the uh, Volpone's wealth. Now this idea grapples the mind of Voltor and he leaves very happily and uh, without even questioning, uh, that, without even having a sigh of that they could they could they could be tricking him they could be ridiculing him or they could be uh, planting something ill in his mind so he was such a foolish man that he uh, came there to believe the uh, idea that he could potentially be the heir even though he had no such strong connections with Volpone just by giving him an engraved plate he believed that he could potentially become the heir of all that he had again throughout his life and with the exit of Walter we see Corbaccio coming and setting his foot in the lives of Volpone and uh, Mosca and we see that he is also bringing a bag of gold to Volpone. And in this similar manner, Mosca tricks him too by saying that, you know, Corbaccio would be the potential heir after Volpone's death and that Volpone is extremely ill and that he might die anytime soon. After hearing that, Corbaccio becomes very happy and he leaves the stage and then Corvino, the another, uh, greedy, another greedy member of the trio, enters and presents an orient pearl and a diamond to Volpone. And he had this mind, he had this uh, mind similar to Corbaccio and Voltor that after Volpone dies, as he seemed to be very ill, he would be potentially the heir of Volpone's valuables. Now, as he presents the Orient Pearl and a Diamond, it's the same way as Corbaccio and Voltor were tricked, he is tricked once again. And with this, we see that there is a cunning acquisition of wealth by Volpone and uh, Mosca. So this play is set in Venice uh, that is progressively allowing the audience or the reader to know what greed can result and how the gold-obsessed trickster Volpone, along with Mosca, indulges in a foolish activity. And this activity is exploiting the greedy trio that is uh, Voltor, Corbaccio and Corvino. And also, not only we see the obsession is in the life of or in the mind of Mosca and Volpone, but also in this trial. And they are exploiting themselves by, uh, by their foolish behavior. So it not only makes the trickster look foolish, but all the people who are relying on the trickery foolish as well. So Walter, even though they're being a lawyer, Corbaccio, being an old gentleman with a life of experience, Corvino, a merchant, is still fooled by the acts of Volpone and Mosca. So everyone, everyone in this play, somewhere becomes very foolish and wealth obsessed. So the audience is brought to a twist when we see that uh, the role play of becoming an old senile man who has fallen ill and might die anytime soon. Volpone actually starts feeling ill and he's uncertain about that, you know, he might die and he doesn't feel fit of his own health. And the twist comes when uh, the situation of the uh, reader are presented in the front of the Senate House. So we see that in the front of the senators, Mosca deceives the greedy trio as well as Volpone. He already made uh, a, a will where he had made Volpone sign stating uh, with a signature that Mosca is the heir and it claims to deny that Volpone is even alive. So Volpone initially as we see, was in support of Mosca and was gaining prominence and wealth from the greedy trio. 
and later we see mosca deceiving volpone because he was the greediest of all and he had not only deceived the greedy trio but volpone himself and volpone now uh, wanted to identify and play a last trick now that uh, volpone is on uh, aware of uh, what Mosca is trying to do and that he was being humiliated, betrayed and tricked by Mosca himself. He tries to turn up uh, in front of the senators and tells the truth. Uh, and, and this truth actually distorts their life because whatever they had thought of uh, becoming uh, by tricking people was all coming down. It was shattered. And now that he had turned himself and Mosca to a prison, their life was not only dist uh, distorted, but it was, uh, it was, it, it didn't give them any kind of fortune. But also, on the other hand, the greedy trio was also punished. Uh, but Towards the end, we see Walter is debarred, Corbacio's property is transferred to his son and Corvino is humiliated by the people. So every foolish people or every gold-obsessed people, every wealth-obsessed people were uh, suffering of their own activities, were suffering of their own uh, follies, were suffering of their own frailties. So the ethics of law and justice, the institution of family and the bond of marriage are all sacrificed on the altar of greed. And we see that they, you know, Balponi and Mosca are using these heinous tools of greed uh, in certain way that they all are being exploited in their own follies. They fall tricked to their own activities itself. And in such, we also see them discrediting the two innocent Celia and Bonario. So this avaricious nature of Walpone, the greedy trio and the uh, Mosca comes to a very unfortunate ending. So this is a very easy information or understanding of uh, the basic element, the basic intention of what Ben Johnson uh, thought of. And with this intention, we come across a very a greedy and repetitive lifestyle of certain personalities of the Elizabethan time and we see that mostly people were thriving for power and uh, wealth and uh, there was a lack of wisdom, there was lack of empathy in people. So th this story cannot be just talked on a very similar or a simple level because the grand-like characters are exaggerated, they are symbolized in animal imagery, there is uh, bird imagery, there is your metaphorical presentations and each act has its own significance and meanings and tellings so towards the end the moral remains that greed is not going to benefit anybody when it is excess so any form of extremism any form of excess is never good to people and also if you want we can study uh, the ben johnson's play the volpone uh, based on the uh, imagery, the functions, the theme, the character, uh, character, the exaggeration, the court scene, the senate scene, the moral implications, and so on. So this 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 has a very grand theme. And if you want, you can comment down on what you intend to uh, study in particular to this text and definitely we can come up in another video uh, like a plot construction, dramatic construction, character understanding and the uh, moral elements, the symbolism and so on. So thank you for staying in connection and hope you have liked it. If there is any problem of an understanding, you can surely mail down. Thank you all. Stay connected.